Hi and welcome. In normal employment scenarios, an STT radar lock-on provides the AIM-7 Sparrow with the necessary information about the target to track and hopefully hit it. However, there are situations where obtaining the lock is not immediate or feasible. The F4E has several tools for such complex cases, from the stab switch to CAA or manual employment. The one discussed in this video is boresight mode. Characteristics Boresight mode is initiated by the WISO using the radar mode knob. Once selected, the radar enters a status similar to holding half action. The antenna moved to a fixed position along the boresight line at 0 degrees azimuth and minus 2 degrees elevation below the FRL, or fuselage reference line. The optical sight is also adjusted and depressed 35 mils, matching the antenna's position. The target is illuminated as long as the target is close to the sight. Target lock from boresight mode. When the pilot maneuvers to superimpose the optical sight to a target, its echo is displayed on the radar scope and the WISO can attempt a lock-on. If successful, the pilot can now maneuver and the avionics will still track the target. The crew can, therefore, adjust the geometry and gauge as required. From this perspective, boresight is a means of speeding up the acquisition of a radar lock after a tally, so the WISO does not have to fiddle with the antenna elevation or azimuth since the pilot is pointing the Phantom as if it were a finger straight at the target. Unavailable radar lock. In case a radar lock cannot be obtained, the crew can still engage a target feeding a simulated Doppler information to the missile via the familiar aspect switch. If the Phantom's crew opts to employ an AIM-7 without radar lock-on, they must, in premise, select the appropriate speed gate. A chart in the kneeboard helps the WISO to select the appropriate value. Each position of the aspect switch corresponds to a speed interval. The labels provide a good idea of such intervals. If everything goes according to plan, the AIM-7 Sparrow should look for reflections from the target in a narrow cone around the gunpipper. The speed gate selected will help it identify the correct target rather than fall for clutter. However, many factors can lead to a thrashed missile, even when the parameters are apparently correctly set. In this scenario, a Tupolev Tu-22M is flying hot and a few thousand feet lower than the Phantom. Attempting to lock the Tupolev will alert its crew and cause it to activate its ECM, breaking the radar lock. Given the good weather conditions and the above-mentioned issues, the crew decides to engage using boresight mode. Before watching how the action unfolds, let's consider a few potential issues. Issue 1. Look down. A Pulse STT lock is exceptionally reliable. The lock is maintained post-acquisition even when the target flies lower than the Phantom. However, looking down while shooting in no-lock boresight mode is definitely tricky, as the strong returns from the ground can easily fool the AIM-7 Sparrows. Selecting the correct speed gate thus becomes fundamental. When looking up or feet wet, aeroplanes probably represent the most prominent targets. There is no competition for the attention of the Sparrow's seeker, and a quick test shows how the missile tracks correctly almost with any speed gate selected, wide included. Look down is different and the first recommendation is to use boresight to highlight the target and then proceed to lock it. If this is not possible, the chances of hitting the target decrease dramatically. Issue 2. Closure Rate to eyeball the correct VC, I put together a quick kneeboard page. The closure rate indicates how fast an echo moves on the radar screen, and to simplify things, I calculated how much the target moves per a fixed number of radar sweeps within the radar scope grid. In this case, the distance covered in five wide sweeps is about a quarter of a grid, which for a scale of 50 nautical miles, results in circa 1,000 knots. Now, checking the speed gates chart, it looks like forward covers it quite well. Nose also seems close, but since I'm in pure pursuit and the target is drifting, the closure rate can only decrease at this point, so I prefer to be conservative. Back to the example, the ATA can help the pilot put the target on the nose. Then, it is a matter of spotting it and placing the sight over it. 
Radar-wise, if the clutter becomes a problem, gain can be reduced to somewhat declutter the radar screen, although it depends on scenarios, antenna elevation angle and circumstances. Once boresight mode is selected, the radar scope shows the returns from the side lobe, the terrain and the contact. In this case, the main lobe intercepts the terrain after illuminating the target, thus returning a clear target echo. As mentioned, the speed gate chosen for the engagement is forward. Then at a range of circa 13 nautical miles, Fox 1. It seems that the AIM-7F is tracking correctly, and eventually the target is splashed. At this range, bomber's ECM is often still an issue, but we have avoided the problem by using boresight mode, at least in this scenario. To demonstrate the criticality of selecting the correct speed gate, I have recorded the same scenario. But wide is selected. As you can see, the sparrow completely ignores the target. After experiencing these examples, two more potential issues come to mind. Issue 3. No lead. Since the target has to be illuminated by the radar and the antenna is not moving sideways, maneuvering the Phantom to lead collision or lead pursuit is not feasible. Such maneuvers would reduce the number of trajectory corrections the Sparrow has to execute to intercept its target, thus retaining more energy through the flight. Issue 4. Maneuvering targets. What if the target's maneuvering? If the target turns from hot to beam, which speed gate should be selected? The crew should consider how the engagement will present circa two seconds after pressing the trigger and select the speed gate option accordingly. In fact, 1.5 seconds are necessary for the missile launch, and then half a second passes before the initiation of the speed gate sweeping. Conclusions the Boresight mode is a very handy and flexible tool capable of expediting radar lock-on acquisition and missile engagement in particular situations. Employing an AIM-7 in Boresight mode requires effort from both crew members. The challenges are not limited there, as each employment requires careful selection of the appropriate speed gate by the WISO and target tracking by the pilot. On the other hand, this mode allows the Phantom to engage hostile aircraft even in conditions it normally would not be able to. Lastly, it is essential to note that Boresight is not a stealth mode. The radar emits radio waves to guide the missile or illuminate a contact, thus potentially triggering its onboard warnings. Thanks for watching and take care.